I'm going to start off with the mobile app. So you can see that I'm sharing my screen. Uh, so the Palladium mobile app, I think it was developed 2018. Uh, we've got we've got numerous clients running with it at the moment. So at the moment, it's it's only available on uh, Android. Uh, we've we've completed the de development for iOS, but it's currently in testing and it's quite a vigorous process. So it's a bit of back and forth with the developers at the moment, to be honest with you, on the iOS. Whereas the Android version has been in the market for a good couple of years now. Um, what's also relevant is you need to know is it's only compat compatible with Palladium Premium. So if you do want to use um, the mobile app, you do need to be on Palladium Premium. Uh, and also you, you can download it uh, in the Play Store. It is available. Uh, you just search in Palladium Accounting if you want to download it on your side. It's this one here, the second one. Okay. So I'm just going to open up the app. So it's this black icon over here. Okay, so on this screen, it's using your email address that's linked to the user profile. So you just, if you want to log into the mobile app, you just got to make sure that your user has this field populated. You can trick the system. It doesn't validate seeing if it's an email address. You can just make it your username if you want to, if you don't feel like typing in your email address every time. Uh, but I'll put in my full one. Uh, and, and please feel free to ask any questions as, as we go along. Uh, okay, so my password. Okay, the, the first time you log in, it can take a minute or so. It downloads all the inventory item, cu customers, all that type of things. Just whilst it's loading from a pricing point of view, so it, there is an annual fee option as well, but uh, I, which most clients don't actually go with it. I might have to find out from sales what that is. So I probably should know. But the, the monthly one is 250 rand per month per user. And the users is basically per device, the same way the desktop uh, licensing works. And, and if you are hosted with us, uh, for, for those who have attended, we've decided to allow uh, like a free trial period up until the end of January. If you are hosted with us, the, the reason I say that is because if the database is hosted with us, it's automatically, automatically uh, the mobile API is already on the server. So it's, we can connect it very quickly to your database if you want to play on the app on your database. If you have your own server and you want us to install the API, uh, then there is just a two hour uh, setup fee for us to do that. Because we have to get one of the developers to log onto your server, open up ports and install the API. Okay, so, so this, this is the first screen that will come up, so which, which will just give you all the databases that this email address and password exists. Yeah, sure, it's not this slow that after the first time you logged in, I probably should have logged in before the training. Um, but uh, you can see some of the icons there. So uh, at the moment, the functionality is a combination of um, sales features and warehouse functionality. Obviously, based on your user rights in Palladium, uh, that dictates what users can and can't do on the app. So I'm an admin user, so I can do anything on the mobile app. And one, one, thing, one, one of the nice things with the mobile app, the development process is a lot quicker, so we're always adding in new things on here. We've recently added the capture POD functionality, which I'll touch on. Uh, CRM is on here as well. So the, the development is very quick on there. So I'm just going to go through some of the things. I'm going to start off with do some of the sales process. So I'm going to go and do a sales quote. And then over here, so I'll have a list of all the quotations that I've done. Uh, so I can only see the quotations I've done, not ones that other reps have done. So to create a new one, I'm just going to select this little plus sign on the top right. So it gives me my next document number. Uh, you'll see your customer listing by if I press this little plus button over here. This is all the customers in the system. So I'm going to do a quotation for this customer. It brings through the sales reps from the system. So it's brought through the default salesperson for this customer. We can input a reference. Day three, 
training. And then at the bottom here, this is where I can add in my items. So these are all the items that are coming from the database. As you can see, the item images also pull through, which is pretty nice. So I'm just adding one here. And then everything you see on this screen is pretty much what you'll see on a standard sales quote screen on the front end. So uh, the, the, the warehouse that you're selling from, the, the important thing obviously for sales reps on the road is to see what stock is available as well. Here's the quantity that you're selling. The price will pull through the price list that's linked to the customer on the system, discounts, amount, tax amount, you know, all the standard stuff here. And again, like the margin displays here, but you can hide that based on the user rights within Palladium. So I'm just gonna add that item in. Uh, there's a few other tabs here for quote details, which is basically just gives you the, the, the document total and the ship to address. You know, th these fields will look um, familiar to you, what you'll see on the front end, the date, the required date, uh, customer info, again, it'll. This should look familiar on the front end where we can see the customer's account balance, open orders, open quotes, and available credit on the customer. And there's also an option to email from here as well if you've got Outlook set up on your phone. So I'm just going to click this tick button over here. Uh, so, so we do have a sign to glass functionality as well. So it's just telling me, okay, the order hasn't been signed. Do you wish to continue? Um, no, I don't. I'm going to sign it. So you'll see here. And then I can record the transaction. By recording, I'm just selecting this little tick button up here at the top. And there it gives me the option if I want to send an email. So I'm not going to send the email now. And it's added that quotation. So quote number 24. And then what, what I always find pretty impressive is if I go into my Palladium database now, you'll see here's the quotation. So it's, it's a live integration. So, so some clients are using like Skymino or Salesforce as a third party system and they don't have it integrated to Palladium. So in, in those cases, then they have to, someone has to duplicate that sales quote on the system. So because of the live integration, obviously it doesn't need to be integrated. Okay, let me just bring up the mobile screen again. Uh, the, the same process with the sales orders. I'm just going to quickly go through it because the functionality is exactly the same as the uh, sales quotation. Selecting the customer, adding my items. Pressing add at the bottom. I know it's hard to see where I'm clicking. Uh, so I'll try and direct. So I'm using sales order has not been signed. Okay, in this case, I'm not going to sign it. Okay, so I just generated, I think it was this 46. So again, if I go into Palladium now, here's my sales order. So it must have been 47 on the app, yeah. Okay. Let me just put the screen again. Let's go back to, okay, we can also do free end quotes. The functionality is the same on the front end. So in, in this case, the customer doesn't have to be selected. So the same as in the front end, you'll just type in the basic information. So this is if you meet someone new who's not currently a client on the road, but you still wanna give them a quotation. So you don't have to select a customer. You can just put in the basic details in the ship to address. The same way the uh, sales free end quote works on the front end. I'm just going to skip over these warehouse ones for now. We'll, we'll focus on the warehousing side in a second. So I'm skipping past bin transfers, warehouse transfers now, pick tickets, stock count, GLV. Uh, important ones for sales reps on the road. They want to see what stock's available. So I can do an inventory inquiries by either by item or by location. So you'll see here for this particular item, I can see I've got no stock in Cape Town. I've got nothing in my uh, default warehouse also. Uh, we've also got purchase order approvals on here. Um, we've, we've actually changed our purchase order approval process a little bit on the version that I'm running. So um, on, on the earlier versions, you could, you could, 
you could have one approver, whereas now we can have groups of approval. So you might have three people who need to approve a PO before it goes out. So that's changed on the desktop. The, the change is still pending on the app. So this, this feature at the moment isn't working on the app. Um, it's, it's still being developed because of the change on the front end. Uh, the other thing to do on the sales side is the CRM activities. So I know Indemisa is going to be covering the CRM um, probably after the workshop module, after Javesh does that. So he's going to touch a bit on the CRM calendar. Um, so if I just go back to the mobile app, there's a bit of setup here. So I won't go into too much detail because um, uh, Indemisa is going to cover it. But we can set up our activity groups. I've got one called sales here. Uh, and within here, within my sales group, what, what does that include? So I've got a demo, I've got an option for a project plan, and you can also put status on whether it's complete. So you'll see that these fields pull through to the mobile. So for the, for the reps who are on the road, they can do a CRM activity and they can say where they've been. So I just press this little plus sign in the top right. So over here, they can say, okay, what, what was I doing today? I was doing a demo, uh, which customer was I at? Uh, what was the task type? Okay, so mine's just to send quotes. So obviously, these are predefined fields that you can build in. Uh, email address. You can assign this task to someone else. So maybe, uh, uh, like in my case, I, I'll assist the sales team with doing demos on site. So I'll go and do the demo, but then I'll get one of the sales reps to send a quotation for the software. So by putting in one of my colleagues' email address, it will send them a notification saying, Adam's requested that you do a quote for this customer. And there's a status here in progress complete. Again, these can be predefined in the setup. Um, my comment here is, uh, I don't know, great demo. Please send quote. Uh, and you can put it on a calendar. You can, you can put a, a, a start time and an end time to say how long you're at the customer. So I'm just selecting add, and then it's been added to here. Okay. Uh, and, and lastly, from a sales point of view on the app, from a management perspective, um, we just open up Google quickly. We do have a, a, a tracking functionality. So for your sales reps, you, you can monitor where they've been that day um, within the working hours. Uh, other clients also use it for their delivery drivers, which will come onto on the warehousing side where the delivery drivers can also use the app. So you can see here, this is my live location now. I'm at Palladium Accounting in four ways. Um, if I look at the live tracking or tracking history, let me try and do this for yesterday. What was the date yesterday? 9th of December. So this, this was the, the route I took to get to a client. Um, this is my route for two days ago. So you, so you do have the ability to live track and see the tracking history to see where the, if they've been where they, they should have been. Um, there's also an option to say show nearby customers. So if you can see you've got a sales rep in a particular area, if you press select show, by, show nearby customers, you, you can maybe give them a shout and say, oh, it's, maybe it's worthwhile nipping past so-and-so whilst you're in the area sort of thing. Okay. And you can see all the users on the left-hand side, so it tracks all of them. Um, okay, so that's it on the sales side. So just to go through some of the warehousing functionality. Uh, any any questions so far? I uh, hope I haven't missed any out. So where's the chat section? Uh, yeah, so the session has been recorded. Okay, and then on to the warehousing side of it. up the screen again. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to do a sales order in Palladium. I could do it from the app. I'm just going to go through the pick ticket process. So sales pick ticket. Uh, let me use something that I've got stock of. It's this one. Okay, so I've got 15 of these. This is an upsell function. I don't want to sell that item as well. 
Okay, so sales order number 48. I'm now gonna generate a pick ticket from the warehousing module. Okay, now we, now we go back into the app. So down here, you can see the stock pick function. Uh, my, my pick ticket number, I assume is this top 105. So, so what we've done for other clients here is they'll have a physical printout of the pick ticket uh, because you might have 100 open pick tickets. So what we've done on the pick ticket is we've, we've added a barcode that has the pick ticket number in it. So uh, this does integrate to the camera phone. So you'll see this little button down here where it starts using the camera so you can scan a barcode that you have. So maybe before I go into too much detail about the warehousing side, because the sales side would obviously be used maybe on an Android tablet or a cell phone, whereas the warehousing functionalities, most of our clients who are live with at the moment are either using a, a Honeywell uh, scanner or a Zebra uh, scanner, which is more rugged and more catered for a warehouse function. So obviously when I'm picking, you wouldn't select this button to use the camera. You, you, you know, the, the proper device would have a, a scanning tool on it. If that, I hope that makes sense. Okay, so I'm just going into this pick ticket. Um, and, and if you want to have an idea that the, the uh, on the Zebra device, the, the one we usually suggest to clients goes for around, I think it's about, depends on exchange rates, but it's around 7,500. And that one allows you to scan like an arm's length away from the barcode. We do have clients who have really high shelving in their warehouse and, and, and they've opted for the higher end models of Zebra units. and they can go for anything between 17 to 30,000 and they can scan up to six meters. So it depends on your requirements in, in terms of scanning distance in your warehouse, okay? But, but if you do have more questions on this sort of thing, do feel free to reach out or ask any questions, yeah. Okay, so, so I've ordered a quantity of 15 on here. So obviously in a warehouse, I'd scan it rather than selecting it. On here, I can see, okay, I've got 117 on hand. I'm just going to take 10 of those, 10 of those 15, and it goes green, which is just indicating it's picked, so you can go on to the next item. The sales discounts is showing on here. It, it probably shouldn't show. I should report that on my side. Okay, so I've recorded it. I think it's complaining about that second line. Sorry, just bear me one sec. I just want to remove the discount. Give me one sec. Just gonna create a new sales order. Okay, same item. Let's see if 10. Don't wanna sell that. Record, okay. So sales order, okay, I'm gonna create the big ticket. 49. Okay, let's go back to the mobile app. Okay, it's the same process again. If you have a scanner, you'll just scan it. Okay, so it's now gone through. My pick ticket is now in the system. So if I go to my warehousing function, stock pick, open my previous one, here's the pick ticket that I did on the scanner. Okay. And you can also define, um, so a difference between enterprise and premium is, well, there's, there's two main differences that are related. We, we can cater for multiple bin locations on premium. And one of the features are you can, you can apply a picking bin. So on enterprise, when you do a pick ticket, really it's more a matter of just generating a, a document and saying this is what's been picked. It doesn't actually physically move the stock in any way on the system. So uh, what the, when you flag something as a picking bin is, is basically when you pick the stock, you're moving it from the bin location, the shelf, and you might be put into a, a dispatcher area. So if you have a picking bin flagged, it, it does the transfer on the fly. So it mimics the physical movement of taking it off the shelf and put it into a dispatch area, if that makes sense. Okay, so it's from the pick ticket process, we then have the ability, so, so now the stock's sitting in the dispatch area, it's either waiting for the customer to come and um, collect the stock or one of your drivers to 
uh, take it out and deliver it. So here we have the delivery advice. So I can just select any sales order on here. These are my quantities, let's take two. Get an error on there. We just try another sales order. It's one with a pick ticket. Just try it again. Okay, that one's gone through. So, so I'm running a beta version of the. Uh, a Palladium desktop version, which probably isn't helping my cause. So our latest official release is 20.1.24.24. 20 25 is a beta version that has some new functionality in here. Okay, so then it comes up with the option saying, do you want to capture a POD for this delivery advice? So I'm going to come onto that functionality a little bit uh, separately, uh, but it's probably our biggest wild wow feature at the moment in demos. Uh, get, it's probably the biggest thing that's getting clients to jump onto premium. Um, okay, so I've done the delivery advice. The stock is now out of the system. Uh, the next functionality I want to have a look at is, yeah, let, let's, let's do the POD. So down here at the bottom, it's this one here. So I just want to give you some background about functionality on the desktop version. Uh, the, again, another difference between enterprise and premium. You'll see on an invoice screen, there's an option here to attach PODs. So on, on all, on all uh, transactions, we have the ability to attach files. Uh, so the functionality works in the same way. You can scan and upload it. The, the biggest difference of this icon is when you send out your customer statements on premium. Uh, so like enterprise, you have the option to attach all invoices or just overdue. But premium goes up one step further where you can also attach PODs. So this, there's three ways to attach PODs to invoicing. Um, you can either do it through the scan and upload which can be quite tedious if you if, if you have many documents to do that. There is a bulk upload feature as well, but the, the smartest way of doing it is if you have your drivers with a with a tablet using an Android device. I'm going to quickly just generate a new sales invoice. So sales invoice number 42. So let's say that the, the driver's now gone out on the road to deliver this unit. So see down here, capture POD. So on this screen you see here, it says it'll say scan documents. So again, what we've done for clients in, in the real world is they'll have a copy of that invoice or delivery note, and we put a barcode on there which contains the invoice number so they can just scan it. So I don't have that in front of me, so I'm just gonna, it also allows you to manually type it in. Uh, but in the real world, world, you'd scan it. So three, four, five, six, seven, 42. So here it opens up the POD so that they can see what they've, what they've delivered. Uh, so you can't change or edit these values, but under the order details part, so this is where you can either get the customer to sign to glass. Alternatively, if they do have a, a, a physical copy of the invoice and they've got the customer to sign there and the actual quantities they've actually received, you can either upload an image or you can capture a photo. So you'll see here, I'm just gonna take a photograph of this custom mug. Uh, let's pause. And then, and then I'm just gonna select the tick button up here. And then he says, data saved successfully. So what's great now is you don't need any manual intervention from head office. They don't have to scan or upload anything. If I go and open that invoice now, document number 42, you see that there is now a POD attached. Here it is. And there you can see the image that I took on my device. So pretty cool. So obviously it'd be an image of the delivery note that they've taken a picture of. And the, the last thing on the POD is the, um, the, from a management perspective, again, you can run a report to see which invoices do and do not have a POD attached so you can see who's doing their job or not. So anywhere where it has an N, it means the invoice does not have a POD. Okay, so it's a really smart feature in my opinion. Um, 
I think the last thing I'm going to cover on the mobile app is another big one is the stock count feature. So previously, oh, you can still do it the same way, but this, this screen is probably familiar to you if you use the uh, stock count module, uh, where you, you might export the sheets, populate it manually, and then import it into Palladium. So where the mobile really takes it to the next level is, if I go to uh, stock count over here, so it, it gives us, it's gone horizontally. So it gives us two options for count one and count two. So when, when I record this transaction, it's the only thing on the mobile app by design that doesn't update the system. So what it does is when we, when we get to the point of recording, it creates an Excel sheet that's ready to be imported. So whoever needs to check can check for variances before it affects the GL and affects your stock quantity. So, it, so, so do bear in mind, it doesn't update the system. It creates an Excel sheet for importing. So what count one and count two does, all it is is a, a prefix on the Excel sheets. Just in case you send your staff around twice to do two counts, you'll be able to look at the, count, the, the Excel sheet and say, okay, this one was for count one, this was for count two, so you don't duplicate anything, but, but I will show you. So I'm just saying this is count one. So if you are using bin locations, um, on this screen here, it's showing all my bins. So I've only got two here, one for default and one for dispatch. So what other clients uh, have done is they'll have a barcode on their bin locations. So, because I mean, some clients have over a thousand bins, so you don't want to be scrolling through this page. Um, so at this point, you can scan the bin location and then it'll open it up. So I'm just selecting on default. So here it says, okay, add products. We're in the default warehouse. Uh, at the top here, it just says select the item. Uh, so here I just add in my items. Again, obviously with a scanner, you'll be scanning these products. You'll be adding it the way I'm doing it. Um, so with a scanner, you'll just be scanning, scanning, scanning. Keep, you might have multiple items in this bin. And you can see here, um, if you do use lot numbers or serial numbers, it does cater for that as well. Okay, so I'm just gonna press save down here at the bottom. So you'll see that the bin location's gone green. So it's just indicating um, to the person who's doing the stock count that uh, they've counted this bin already. Okay, so I can do it for the second bin as well, my dispatch bin. Okay, and then you see it's gone green. So, so once you've completed your stock count, you'll just press this tick button on the top right. It says save successfully. So then if I go into the front end of Palladium, uh, you'll see here there's a new button here where it says download mobile stock count. So this one that I've done on today's date here, if I just go download, desktop, um, you'll see it's, it's aut automatically put it into the format for importing. So it's my default warehouse, it's got my category here, it's got my part number, uh, and it's put in the actual quantities here. And then the new column is also the bin location. So I put two items in there, and then this is the format that's ready to import. And again, if you use serial not numbers, it would automatically populate this screen as well. So it, it should uh, eliminate the, the need for capturing everything the correct format for Palladium to import. So it does that part for you. Okay. All right, so, so that's all I'm gonna cover on the mobile app for today. Um, as I mentioned, anyone who's in attendance today, if you, if you do wanna trial it, we're, we're giving everyone a free trial up until the end of January. Um, this is only for hosted clients, unfortunately, as I mentioned, because the API is already set up there. So it's very simple for us to point it to your database. Um, but for other clients, we, if, if you do want to have the free trial open until the end of January, you do have to charge a two-hour setup fee to install the API on your server to get it all set up. Okay. I don't know if there's any questions on there because I'm going to be handing you over to Javesh now for the uh, workshop at what part. I Adam, just to clarify what, what we need to do to get this trial, uh, which will expire in January. Yeah, yeah sure. So, so are you... Do you know if you're hosted with us at the moment? Yes, I am hosted with you. Okay, so if you could just pop me an email. Um, I'm just going to type in my email into the chat. Just say you're interested in the, the live trial part. Um, and if you just maybe just give me your database name, 
um, so I know which ones to set it up to, and then we can take it from there sort of thing. So any, anyone who's interested, uh, if you just email me directly about the, the free trial, and I'll, I'll assist you from there. Okay. You, you, you will need to be on Palladium Premium as well. I don't know if you already are or not. As yes, it's only compatible. Okay, then, then perfect, yeah. So if you could just email me, let me know that you're interested. Uh, well, I've, I've put my email address in privately. Let me just share it again. Sorry, everyone. Everyone can see my email. Okay, my email's in the chat now, okay. All right. Any, any other questions in regards to the mobile? Okay. So I'm just going to hand you over to Javesh. He's just going to join the Zoom meeting from his side, and I'm going to make him the host. So if you just bear with us for two minutes, please. Thanks, everyone. 